In this presentation, we'll be looking at the Access API and discussing roles, permissions, and capabilities. This video is an extract from the 12 lesson Moodle plugin development by example course. A link to the course page is in the description. But before we start, if this video proves to be useful and informative, please don't forget to like it. So now we'll look at roles, permissions and capabilities. So roles such as manager, teacher and student are in essence a collection of permissions relating to what a user can do in a given context. So the capability is an action, sort of edit a course, delete a course, etc. And the context is in which uh, context the capability is uh, uh, valid. So there are four possible permissions that can be set against a capability. Again, remember the capability is the action. So not set which would mean you kind of inherit, inherit it if you've got other permissions or other roles that will allow that permission um, or, or deny it. Um, we've got allow, which is permissions granted for the capability, prevent, so the permissions removed for the capability, even if it's allowed in a higher context. And prohibit is permissions completely denied and cannot be overridden. Okay, so a user can inherit permissions from a higher context or be denied explicitly. Um, and permissions can also be overwritten, overridden in some contexts. So most capabilities only really make sense in a particular context. For example, when managing a course or managing course completions, it only makes sense in the context of a course. So Moodle has six contexts namely system which is system wide site wide user uh, capabilities relating to user records and user users uh, course category which are um, capabilities that relate to managing a collection of courses um, we've got course related ones and even more granular module and block related uh, context Site administrators are a special type of user. There's no restrictions and normally there's no capability check whatsoever. Okay. Um, so the plugins define their own capabilities uh, using the Access AD, uh, API in the file uh, Access PHP in the DB folder, which we're going to discuss next. And then uh, generally, Generally, only external service plugins, web service plugins, require additional roles to be defined. So as a plugin developer, you really don't want to be developing a plugin that requires the site administrator or programmatically uh, requires the, the creation of additional roles. You, you, you define your capabilities and then the site admin decides which roles get that capability. You can set default uh, um, permissions for your capabilities and for more information have a look at the link on this page that's pointing to the 3.9 documentation if you want the 3.11 documentation replace 3.9 with 3.11 so back in our IDE we need to define uh, a new folder and define a f uh, create a new file access.php in that folder and this is our access php file the usual stuff at the top and then you define your capabilities in a capabilities array where the key for that array uh, is your capability and then the uh, settings for that particular um, capability is the value is another array of values uh, for the capability. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've got a capability. Notice that this is not quite the uh, Frankenstein name. It's more the block and then my courses add instance is the capability. The whole capability is block, my courses add instance, okay. And my instance is to allow uh, the addition of the block on the dashboard, right? And even if your plugin, 
remember I said some of the blocks uh, uh, are not specific to let's say the dashboard they'll be only allowed in the courses or in the courses or on the site homepage they even if your plugin is not to be added to the dashboard you still need to define this uh, capability and let's have a look at the capability we've got the capability is right the context level is system dashboards a little bit of a different uh, way of looking at things and so the, the sometimes it doesn't quite fit into the standard Moodle way so you would have expected that to be context block but it isn't it's context system and then the archetypes that are allowed by default is user and that means just about all authenticated users will have that capability because it's their dashboard they can um, they can add the block to their dashboard and then one thing that I didn't mention in my presentation is clone permissions from this is a fairly new thing in Moodle but it allows you to actually copy uh, permissions from another from another capability and this is a core capability for managing blocks on the dashboard uh, provided by the Moodle core so that's that's for the that's for the dashboard the other capability we've defined here is add instance this is to add the instance to at other places outside of um, outside of the dashboard now I'm sure as this needs to be defined as well even though as in our, our case of our block we are going to only allow it to be added to the dashboard and in this case we have a respite mask uh, of spam and cross-site scripting the cap type is right the context level is block and then the archetypes that get the permission by default are editing teacher and manager so these archetypes to stretch it a little bit further if I created a new role and I use the base editing teacher as the sort of base of my, that new role then that that role would also get this permission because at the at the at the base level they are that particular type of user and then again we have the clone permissions from and this time cloning from the site Moodle the core Moodle site manage blocks uh, capability so that's our capability file our access file and now we really need to define some strings to describe our capabilities so we go back to our language file so this is our language file and we've added in a couple more strings for our capabilities and a description for each of the capabilities and having done that let's up our version um, because we've uh, changed the access accesses uh, the capabilities we've added capabilities and we've changed strings uh, we will need to upgrade the uh, plugin we can't just clear the cache in this case so before we carry on with our code let's have a look at the access API so these are um, functionality to assist your plugin in working with uh, capabilities and permissions etc so one of the first things you're always going to need is your kind of context so you can get an instance of your context by calling the instance method of the relevant uh, context class as shown on screen and once you've got a context you can get other contexts so you can get the parent context of a context or you can get the child context uh, of a context then other functionalities to check user capabilities so you can use the uh, function has capability which checks for a particular capability and this is the one you probably use the most because you'll be checking for capable your capability in order to determine whether the user has access or has the right or permissions to do uh, an action within the plugin right you can of course uh, uh, ad additionally you can uh, uh, check for various capabilities by using the has any capability function which will uh, check if the user has one or more capabilities in the list you provide 
has all capabilities is if you need to check several capabilities at the same time okay and then there's a function get users by capability uh, which returns users who have that specified capability it's a very um, a very uh, intense um, SQL or database call and so you should use it sparingly if at all ever okay then other kinds of uh, useful functions is things like require capability so that is it's like saying you has capability but require capability will throw uh, an exception if the user hasn't got that capability require login which is a bit of an overlap with the Moodle lib API in checking the user is logged in uh, you can check is logged in um, so require login requires make sure that the user is logged in if not force them to log in um, whereas is logged in is just quickly checking if the user is logged in then you have is viewing is guest uh, is guest user and then you can uh, get uh, enrollment information uh, which is an overlap with the enrollment api so is enrolled get enrolled users and the very useful is site admin to check if the user is a site admin okay and for more information follow that link and have a look at the access api documentation so that's it for the presentation to watch other extracts for, from the course click on the playlist link or alternatively watch the video describing the course content don't forget to subscribe and like and thanks for watching